Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, and I am also known as ETCG1. I have two names and I haven't figured out why yet, but here on ETCG1, I start things off with, hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Please enjoy this digital confection that I found for you. We can all have some. Now that we've got the pleasantries out of the way, let's get to it. And today I'd like to talk about five of, well, the most commonly used tools that I use uh, on an almost daily basis. Every time I work on a vehicle, these things seem to end up on my cart every single time. So I thought I'd share them with you and then circle back and then ask you, what five tools are the tools that you seem to be using all the time that you can't live without? Let's get started. Number one on my list is my light. Now, you, of course you need a light to see things uh, and inspect things and it's super helpful, but there's something about drop lights and for whatever reason, they always seem to shine in my face rather than what I'm trying to look at. But a light so that I can see things is Awesome. Now, back in the day, I used to use those corded drop lights and those were a real pain in the butt. And I'm not advertising for these guys, by the way, because, well, I've thrown this across the shop more than once because it frustrated me. But the point is, you need to see stuff and a light really helps. The next thing or things that always seem to be on the cart is pry bars of different lengths and sizes. I like really huge ones to get maximum leverage, but I also like to use small ones for little jobs like maybe prying off a thermostat housing, something like that. But I always seem to have need to pry stuff and move stuff around. Using leverage is a big part of being a mechanic, I think, and well, this helps get you there. Pry bars. This is something I get asked about in every single video I post where I use this stuff. And I'm sure you've seen me use it quite often, but you've probably seen me use it in the red can. And this is brake cleaner. You can actually put anything you want in this and put compressed air in here and spray whatever you like through this. But the point is, I use brake cleaner a lot, like a lot, a lot. This is non-chlorinated. That's why it's in the green container. Now, I plan to do like a comparison at some point between chlorinated and non-chlorinated brake cleaner, but I like to buy it in bulk rather than in the cans. And also this is non-aerosol, so it's technically better for the environment despite the chemicals that are used in it. That said, brake cleaner is almost always on my cart, my tool cart, when I go to work on something. Eric, why did you scribble over the logo? Well, I'm not advertising for these guys, which is why. The main thing I want you to see is the penetrant. Now, where I am in Southwest Ohio, things get rusty. If you watch my channel, you know things get rusty. And I'm always, always, always busting out the penetrating oil. I've used several types. I'm not endorsing this particular type. This is the type that I'm using at the moment. They all work to some degree. Uh, there's also the whole thing with uh, using acetone and uh, automatic transmission fluid. Also heating things up and dropping candle wax in, helps break things loose. Penetrating oil is like one of the first things I go for uh, whenever I'm working, especially like I said in Southwest Ohio where rust is prevalent. I save the best for last because this has been my companion so much throughout my mechanical career and that is a pocket screwdriver. I have used this, well, I've, it's been referred to as my 11th finger because I use it so much. I use it to disconnect connectors. I use it to pry little things. Remember I talked about prying earlier and sometimes not, you don't always need a giant pry bar. Sometimes you need something small. Well, this thing has served so many different purposes for cleaning, for, uh, well, things I'm not exactly thinking of at the moment. I just know that whenever, it doesn't really matter what I do, in fact, when I worked as a professional technician at the dealership, I had this, a pen, and a pen light in my pocket at all times. So a pocket screwdriver, at least in my mind, is one of those things I must have all the time. I can also use it as a screwdriver. Now I realize a couple of those aren't exactly tools per se, but they are things that always end up on my tool cart and I'm using them in virtually every single repair that I do, which I wanted to talk about the essentials in this video. So those are my five essentials. What are your five essentials? What are your five go-tos whenever you're doing repairs or whenever you're tinkering around with something? Share those down in the comments. I'll put links to things down in the description, including additional tools and stuff that's related to this, including a link to the brake cleaner because everybody always asked about that. I will also put a link to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions. So in other words, description has a bunch of stuff for you. Remember, I post ETCG1 videos on Monday, so stop back and see me then. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and thank you very much for watching today. And yes, I know it's cold in the shop. It's just how it is in the winter. See ya.